and welcome to Global Church Online. It is great that you've tuned in today. And I just want to say, if this is your first time of tuning in, then an even bigger welcome to you. Make sure you stick around. We've got some great stuff coming your way. But also go and check us out on our website and our social media pages. The details are going to come on the screen below. We do loads of stuff of the life of Global and we'd love for you to come and be a part of that. But back to today, like I said, we've got some great stuff coming your way. In a little while, we've got a talk and I know it's going to help you. It's going to get you set up ready for the week ahead. Uh, but first, we always like to start with a couple of songs from our band. So I'm going to hand straight over to them. You're indescribable in every way You searched me out and now I'm caught up in your grace I heard my name across the ocean You pulled me closer, the current changed You showed me light, a new horizon A silver lining, a brand new day And I'm like, oh Here we are again in the White Room, in uh, a cellar in, in Soho, London, <laughs> right in the middle of the city. It's fantastic. For, for you people who don't know, me and Shelley moved here uh, just over a week ago and we're settling in. And while we've been here, uh, our, our second son, Elliot, and his wife, Yana, have just had a baby girl called uh, Scarlett. I know, sure. That's a great middle name. It's a Swedish name. I know. Mm. 
and uh, it's, it's, it's been a fantastic uh, time, a busy time, that uh, it's amazing. They're living with us before they move into the new apartment and uh, it's just amazing. We're surrounded by so many miracles that are happening at this moment in time in our lives. It's a beautiful thing. Um, it's great when you, when you live by faith and not by laws. It's great when you walk in the Holy Spirit and not just trying to manipulate situations and people and tr trying to get your own way and get your own will. You know, you can just walk out there. And of course, people will try to manipulate you and get you into there. But you know, the longer, the more that you walk in the Holy Spirit, the more that those kind of people get exposed for what they are and they drop off out of your life. And we just keep going. It's simple as we're not perfect. We make mistakes. I'm just looking at my hands here in the <laughs> jazz hands. <laughs> we make mistakes, but you know something? Uh, we, 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 the thing that counts is faith expressing itself in love. We love people. As global, we're learning to love people from whatever background, whatever tribe, whatever religion and faith, or none. It, people are people first, and we are all connected. We are all made in the image of God. We all matter to God. No such thing, there's no such thing as a Muslim nation. There's no such thing as a Christian nation. God is the God of the nations. And whichever nation we come from, whatever colour of our skin, it doesn't matter, yellow, black or white, we are precious in his sight, as the old song says. And we've got to learn to love. We've got to learn to serve each other in love. Um, and grace is really love. And it, it's, 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 it's love that's walked a mile in your shoes. And it gets you, gets, gets where you're coming from. And uh, law is all about performance. It's all about um, the pecking order, how high up the, the, uh, the scale you are, uh, socially are. Even in church, that happens. And you know, the thing for years has been, if you can get on that platform to preach or, or, or to play an instrument, or if you can, uh, if you can go on staff, you've, you've really made it. And uh, you know, we, we're trying to debunk that kind of thing within Global, and we're just saying, how brilliant are you as a person? How brilliant are you with an audience of one? Just, just God looking. You know, we live for him. And we want our lives to be acceptable to him. That's what we want. And, uh, we, we, you know, in doing that, we try not to be full of laws and legalism. But we do want to live a, a life that's pleasing to God. So that one day, someday, God will turn around to you and say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Come on in. Because this is reward time. You know, for the believer, there's no condemnation on Judgment Day, only commendation. And, uh, you, you know, I can't wait until that commendation. I'm expecting a massive mansion, maybe even a series of them. <laughs> so good. Um, but, you know, we're looking at grace and, and truth uh, versus law and legalism and performance. And... You know, the fear is, is that if we're full of this love and we keep, like a Mary, we, 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 as in the story of Mary and Martha in the Bible, Luke chapter, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. You, you know, where, where Mary's listening to Jesus and he's teaching her God's word and Martha's preparing food. And then she comes in and complains to Jesus. She can't hold it in any longer. She, there's an outburst. Don't you care, Jesus? You know, he's like, Mecca, come in here and help me. And Jesus said, what Mary's chosen is the right thing and it won't be taken from her. And our pragmatism and, and, and uh, our good works and stuff can squeeze out God's word. And it's like, yeah, we don't do the Bible and all that. Oh, it's, it's only for, you know, the super, super spirituals and self-righteous. No, it's not. That's a lie from the devil. That is a lie from the devil. No, we stand on God's word. We come from God's word. God's word carries God's presence. We we uh, we exalt God's word. We we uh, we lift it up. We it, it has pride of place in our lives. Let God's word be a light to your path and a, a lamp to your feet. 
and uh, might be each other way around, it don't really matter. <laughs> but, you know, we, we, uh, we come out of God's word, it's, it strengthens you. When you read even a chapter, just a few verses, your spirit enlarges. No, Mary chose the right thing and Martha was just full of cares and works and a to-do list. I wonder if you're like that today. You know, she's full of that. You know something, once Martha would have done all them jobs, you know what she'll have done? Found some more. Because she's driven to just work and work and work. There's another woman in the New Testament that was exactly the same. And uh, it was in Acts of the Apostles. And she worked so hard. And uh, on behalf of the poor, she gave herself and she died. She just run herself into the ground. And you, and you think... You know, that is not the life that God's got for us. And missionaries have not helped us. And the kind of, the afterglow of missionaries where they had nothing and this, that and the other. And I know it started like that, but they did have some big funders, some of these people as well. But the point is, when you move away from scripture, as, as how the early apostles practised their, uh, their evangelism and mission, when you move away from their principles then you start to create your own and it's not great and there's a book called missionary methods st paul's are ours and uh, you know uh, uh, this guy was a missionary to china and he got kicked out of china in 1912 and he wrote this book because he saw how missionaries came from the west into india and africa and places like that and they brought colonial co colonialism with them and uh, that kind of Western thinking, and, uh, and it just really wasn't helpful. Uh, and and it, it added all sorts of layers of hassle uh, on new believers in these nations that God didn't require. And he wanted it, the, 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 the struggle. Roland Allen was the, the, uh, the writer and the missionary, and he wanted to get back to the apostles, Paul's way of doing missionary work and uh, and it's the it's the same for us and <clears throat> you don't have to get on a plane or get on a ship and go to another nation to be a missionary we're all meant to be missionaries every one of us are sent by the Holy Spirit by uh, by Jesus through his Holy Spirit so you know let us get that in our mind but it's how we go and you do, are we going with a set of laws and Christian laws or are we going to go with a gospel that liberates people from a life entangled in laws and can't do, don't touch, don't think like that, think like this. Absolutely, um, you, you know, it's a life that's not just dull, it crucifies you on the inside. So this is my last week on this, on, on, on this topic. Again, we have barely scratched the surface, but the law of Moses or shall I say, the law was given through Moses, John chapter 1. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. You, you've got to have them both together for to have the dynamite, to have the, 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 uh, the power of, of that, that verse. And you know, uh, truth without grace is mean. But grace without truth is meaningless. Keep saying this because I want you to get hold of that mantra because we need both together. When you've got grace and truth, you've got, you've got love that's strong, that's strengthened by truth. But it's, it's, it's acceptable because of love. But uh, let me give you an illustration. In John chapter 8, Jesus comes along uh, and uh, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Jesus is, is there living his life. And uh, some teachers of the law brought a woman to him that they had caught just right there and then committing adultery. They caught her in the act of committing adultery. And they dragged this poor woman in front of Jesus, threw her on the floor. And he said, this woman has been committing adultery. And the law of Moses says that she must be stoned to death. What do you say? These men are so full of truth. They are so mean. And they don't care about this woman's feelings. They want to, they want to have a go at Jesus. And she's going to be the kind of um, uh, uh, prop, the stage prop, uh, in, in order to trap Jesus and get to him and prove a point. So cruel. 
And so she, they throw this woman down. And it's, it's, so she's surrounded by men predominantly at that point in close proximity. And Jesus, the Bible says, was writing with his finger uh, in, in the dust, in the dirt. And uh, Jesus looked up and he said, well, if the law of Moses says that, then let he who is without sin throw the first stone. And the Pharisees looked at him as if to say, he's done it again. He's, so Jesus is not trying to get rid of the law. The law's good. It's right. But now as he applies it, he's applying grace. And he's saying, so this is not your sin clearly, but you will have sin. Jesus is aware that, you know, we have fallen from perfection. Romans 3, ch chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and fallen short of God's standard, every one of us. So none of us can start throwing stones. And Jesus knew that. And he said, okay, fulfill the law of Moses, stone her to death. She must have had one eye up like going, what? Say what? <laughs> he's going, he's cooler than Clint Eastwood. He's like, so if that's what the law says, do it. But let him who is without sin throw the first stone. And it says, the older men first dropped the bricks and then the younger, the zealots, they were, they were holding on to, we've got to keep God's law, we've got to keep God's law. And they had to let go of the stones. Why? Because they had sins. Like you have sins. Like I have sins to defeat. And they walked away and then Jesus the woman is left with Jesus. She came, she was brought in by people who hated her and wanted her dead. And now she's left with a man who loves her and wanted her to live. And he says, we're all your accusers. And Jesus crouched down, he, bet, he got on her level. It's beautiful, read the story in John chapter eight. He says, we're all your accusers. No way. Neither do I accuse you. And then Jesus tops it off with truth and he says, now go and sin no more. Or go and leave your life of sin. So he doesn't drop the standard, doesn't drop the truth, but it's applied with grace. Can you see the difference? And he said, go and leave your life of sin. Let me put it another way. He's saying, you don't have to live like this. Not in my kingdom. And I'm the king of that kingdom. And I give power to people who are weak. And I have a future for people like you. Go and leave your life of sin. I'm giving you the power to change your life. Go for it. He's given a direction, grace and truth. Absolutely beautiful. And I want to produce a church like that. More than one church. Hundreds of churches all over this planet. And I believe that in global, we have a voice. We have a voice that's slightly different from other churches. Every church has its own differences and um, how they apply the gospel. And um, ours is like the best. <laughs> ours, we have, we have a way of applying the gospel and uh, it's grace and it's truth. And we don't sacrifice truth for grace and we don't ignore grace just so that we can have truth. No, we want them both together. Why? Because we want the dynamic of the scriptures and Jesus' life to come together to shape us and to lead us forward. We're Bible-based, Christ-centered, spirit-filled, mission-focused. These are another four of our values, but we love it. We love God. We love people. Here's another thing. We love life. But when you're full of laws, you can't love life. I can remember going to parties when I first became a Christian and especially middle class parties because I come from like kind of lower working class stock. <laughs> the church was predominantly filled with middle class people. Anyway, here's the point. I'd go to, we, we, you know, you'd have a party and we'd, we'd rock up at a party. All the middle class people would rock up. If you said it was 7.30, they would be there at 7.30. People like me and others, we used to come about nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we were never on time but when you you know I watched as people would come and here's, here's some of the things that would, would happen as, 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 the, the, as I've watched these people that have been Christians second generation Christians third generation Christians and they would come they bring a bottle of wine which was like edgy a lot of people just brought schler if you don't know what schler is 
you're not missing anything. They call it non-alcoholic wine and uh, it's just like expensive pop. But anyway, they brought the wine and so they, so they bring the bottle of wine and then the, get, the, the, the uh, horse would say, would you like a glass of wine? They went, I'll just have the one please. Oh yeah, just a small one. And everything would just be so full, so thought out and so full of laws. And then they'd have this glass of wine and they'd, they'd go around and they'd dutifully talk to certain people. And then by 9.30, they were on the way home. And they went, we've had a fantastic time. Thank you so much. Thank you. you know, it's been lovely. Got to get back for the kids. Got to do the, got, always go, oh, never, never settle. And I used to look and I used to think, you haven't enjoyed it. Because, I, 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 you know, when I had a party, I wanted, well, I did, I stopped a few people. So if it's so fantastic, why don't you stay? awkward <laughs> why don't you stay because I knew they didn't mean it and you know we want people to stay and you know legalism and laws and and the fact that you don't really like people you haven't got a big heart then you, you want to get away from people you want to get get back home and and watch a program that you've 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 either taped or or uh, saved or whatever or, or read a book um, because you, you're in a great book at this moment in time and, you, and it's just you and this small world. That was a Christian life that I was brought into and I hated it. I'm a party animal. I've been a party animal all my life and my friends are party animals. How are they ever going to fit into a church like that? Let me give you the answer. Never. And neither will your friends. So st stop playing at this thing called church and let's be real. Let's be honest. And let's start with the culture that we're in. And let's, let's let that culture be infused by God's love, his grace and by his truth. And, and let's get cracking and have a great church that's full of reality and, and life and a zest for life. And uh, so many Christians do not know how to love life. They just know how to love a book. And uh, my life's bigger than books and I do read. But my life's bigger than books uh, and it's, it's full of colour and, and uh, you know there are times when I think I could do with getting off this because I am so tired. <laughs> but then there's more things and this, people's lives are being changed and just being in that atmosphere is so life giving. It's fantastic. You know Often people like me get accused of loving God's work more than that you love God. And that's a silly thought. That comes from the 80s, really, charismatic group. But um, <laughs> you charismatic, don't, don't, don't get, you, you know, I'm a charismatic as well. It's just I'm not as boring as they are, or full of laws as they are, uh, as they were in those days. Moving on. Can we, can we just bring this, this series now to a close? You know... I'm not ashamed of loving Jesus. I love Jesus Christ. And uh, I have brothers and I love my brothers. I have sons and I love my sons. I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. He's the man above every man. He's the person above every person. And I don't mind bowing the knee to Jesus Christ. More than that, it's my life. And uh, I want to say that there's parts of our lives where we haven't died and we need to die to self. We need to die to what I want. Because before we come to faith, what I want is paramount. What I want is the thing that's, that has to happen, otherwise I'm going to be sad. And we find ways of, of manipulating people with facial expressions or whatever, um, or sulks, or you know, grumpiness, just to get your own way. It's manipulation, the tools of the devil. And we use them all the time, <laughs> even in the church. You know, domination, that's the end result of manipulation or intimidation, is to control people. And we've got to get free from all this. It's based in law and it's based in fear. Fear of doing it wrong, fear of not getting it right, fear of somebody controlling us, fear of not being in control, fear based. And it's, it, it has no place in the kingdom of heaven. And, and you, you know, I want you to have this faith-based thing, that our lives are based in faith, not fear, and we walk in strength and, and confidence. 
So what steps must we return to to get a grace-filled lifestyle? So let's have a look at these following applications. Um, our Mary experience should precede our Martha experience. In other words, relationship with God should take priority over what we do. So we have a relationship with God and it's out of that that we then serve the world, serve our families, serve our bosses at work. Our competence, our performance should come from our relationship with God. We must find a balanced rhythm of being and doing. And, uh, you know, here's, here's something for people that are in, uh, you work for the church maybe, and it seems like church are out every night and it causes arguments at home and stuff like that. And if you're in that kind of a church, let me give you some advice. Have two nights a week for church stuff, where you're going to meetings and things like that. Have two nights a week uh, at home with your family. And have two nights a week out there reaching your friends, whether it's playing squash, badminton, football, netball, or you know, going to the pub or whatever. And that leaves you one other night that you can use for whatever you want. Another night with the family, another night because you've done some more meetings for church, whatever. But try to hit a balanced life. I've been in ministry now for 40 years and I'm still as fresh as a daisy. <laughs> That's fresh as a daisy. But I am full, ding, dang, do. Got a lot of energy. Why? Because I've worked a lot of things through and I've been full of truth without grace. And then I've tried to have grace and I've got truth and you know, you pull both together and I've, I've been all in for Jesus. All in when he didn't really want all that. He just wanted some of that. And I've had to figure some things out to find out his will. And, uh, and you know, we don't always get the right balance, but we can get a better balance than what we have. And uh, you know, I don't even believe in a life work rest balance and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's too mechanical. Life's dynamic. It's not mechanical. People are not there pre-packed and pre-ordered for us. Life, it just happens to people and we've got to be flexible. There's a word. And grace helps us to be flexible. Let me move on. We must believe and embrace these following grace foundations. Number one, God's grace is mine for free because it's based on Jesus' performance, not mine. Somebody had to fulfill God's law and then they had to die for the sins of the world. And Jesus is the only person that's had we done that. And so now we're made right with God, not by our performance as Christians, but simply by believing what Jesus did on the cross. We're celebrating Easter. And you know, we've, we've got to understand when Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. And the work that God needed to happen finished. And it was God that completed that work. And now we can just believe in Jesus and we get into the kingdom of heaven on his goodness, not our goodness. He's like, we shouldn't really be here. We've got a free ticket. We didn't pay for it. He paid for it. We get him for free. How fantastic is that? The Bible says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not of yourself so that no man can boast. Not by good works, so that nobody can boast. It's by grace through faith. His grace, his goodness, his love towards us, and we accepted it in faith, and we received eternal life. It starts now, before the grave, and it goes on after the grave. That's why when, we, we, when somebody dies as a believer, of course we miss them, of course uh, we're, we're touched by their passing, but we don't grieve like other men because we know where they've gone. Because Jesus went there before them. And he came back to tell us that there is a heaven. And that we can go there if we believe in him. And so that's what we've done. And I know that I will go and follow all my family that have died in Christ. That's a great thing. That's a great thing. So God's grace is mine for free. Because it's based on Jesus' performance, not mine. Number two, God does not love me. And forgive all my sins for what I can do for him. He just does it because he's, he's, a, he's a giver. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. 
Number three, I must die to my old self and living under the pecking order system. You see, forget church, even in pubs and bars, there's a pecking order. There's the toughest guy. There's the womanizing guy. There's the, the most beautiful woman. There's the less beautiful one. There's pecking orders wherever we go. There's the richer ones and the poorer ones. There's the guy that's got the great job with the great company car and the guy that doesn't have a, a company car at all. He's just despised. He works in a, a dead end job. It's a pecking order and we've got to die to that. In the past, Paul says, we used to judge people like that. Now we don't judge anybody by them standards. We live by the Holy Spirit. God loves everyone. Um, and accepts everyone and we've, we you know we want grace it, it is my, my next point really God's grace helps me as I am and then enables me to live by my own ability um, so I change that in that it's, it's, when you're accepted as you are God's grace enables you to accept others as they are that's what I wanted to get to and I can, I can be around people that I wouldn't necessarily like naturally. But God's grace in me sees them as lost and sees them as people who need God's eternal life. And I want to reach them. And we, I have to start where they are, not where I want them to be. And uh, that's what Jesus was good at. He started where they were at. And then out of them, he pulled them into his ways. And... Uh, Question for you is, when you, when you reach out to people, when you connect with people, do you just fall into their ways or are you bringing them your way? God had to speak through the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, no, God said to Jeremiah, let them turn to you, don't you turn to them. In other words, as you go amongst people, your lifestyle's different. And, and we are the same, yeah, you, you know, we can hang out with people, we're the same as them, we look like them, we dress like them, but there's a difference. And vive the difference. We are different. Why? Because we belong to a different kingdom. Number five, the only requirement of receiving grace is humility. And even that you'll find scarce within your heart. You'll need to ask God to give you the humility. If you're anything like me, the night I became a Christian, I wanted to walk forward and answer the call from a man called Nicky Cruz, a gangster from New York. And he called people to put their faith in Jesus. And I wanted to, but I had two gangster uncles sat behind me laughing. <laughs> I thought, I cannot go forward. They're going to think I'm a right wimp. Then I saw my mother walk out. And I thought, I, I come from her. And she walked out and she went and gave her life to Jesus Christ. And as a 19-year-old teenager, I thought, why can't I go? I came from her. And I didn't have the same humility. And I prayed that night and I said, God, will you take me? Help me, to, help me, take me forward, help me to go. I can't, I'm too proud. And that night I did go. And uh, I'm so glad I did. And, you know, Christ became real to me. And, you know, the rest is history. But the only requirement for receiving grace is humility. Num number six, ministry is greater. Our life is greater. Our leadership is greater because of gratitude, not guilt, when, uh, as the motivation. When you're grateful to God for what he's done in your life, you serve your boss. Why? Because the word says, Ser serve your boss like you're serving Jesus himself. And you're like, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna treat, I'm gonna treat my co-workers, I'm gonna treat people like the Jesus. And when you do that, honestly, your motivation changes. And it's gratitude, Jesus. You died on the cross for me. There's nothing that I couldn't do that I wouldn't do for you. But it's not driven by guilt. I ought, I should, I must. That's the language of legalism. Stepping into grace, I've got some R's for us here as we finish. Um, we've got to we've got to have a, a revelation, or we need we need things to be revealed within us. Our the way we behave. We've got to have a, a, an honest examination of our behaviour and our thoughts and start to look, no matter how ugly it is, and say, that's where I'm at, I need to change. We need to surrender our performance issues to God, always performing to please people or whatever, to please him. We've got to surrender that, relinquish, recall, not the people and issues for which I'm performing, 
who are they that I'm trying to impress? And let's un detach yourself from that and be free. So release, in, in other words, let go of wrong views and surrender myself. Worldly views of life and people. And let's get a biblical view and surrender ourselves to what the Bible says and what Jesus has said in the, in, in the gospel. Number five, request. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you God's grace. Request. Ask him. to get Every day, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Number six, renounce. You know, refuse to allow wrong motives to rule me. Refuse to allow wrong motives. Bring your motives into the light. And they can see, when you speak them out, they sound ridiculous sometimes, but it's good. Because as you bring them into the light, then the power of them is broken. And you can say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to live. That, that I'm going to do that. I was, I was going to do that because of that motive. Now that I've highlighted the motive, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do something else. We will do something. But, you know, I'll be, I'll be inspired by grace, not by uh, these bad motives. And last of all, ret return. Return to serving God from a loving, responsive heart, not out of duty. You know, like the older brother in the story of the prodigal son, I haven't time to go into it. But the younger brother was reckless and wild, spent all his money on wine, women and singing, not much singing. And then he came back to his father, repentant, saying, I'm sorry. And his dad reinstated him, put a new ring on his finger, put a new robe on his back and Reebok trainers. And he had a rump steak ready for him, all the eyes. And he came back and the older brother resented it. Why? Because the, the older brother said, I always have, have done what you've, you've wanted. Yeah, I've always done the right thing. I've always done what you've asked. He was a self-righteous man, but his life was full of laws and he had no love in his heart for his lost brother that had come back. And uh, that's what legalism and laws do to people. They, 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 they make you dehumanise people, but God's grace and truth it's like the prodigal father in the story sees this lost son returning he says he was lost but now he's found we've got to we've got to celebrate this is fantastic i can tell you so many stories of people that i've led to christ uh, um, and uh, you, you know the, the the celebrations off the back of it uh, have been fantastic and i even i've had to learn new ways of celebrating with people uh, and even when i felt like celebrating because i've got other things to do and but it's their moment and you've got to join in that moment and it doesn't fit with life and oh it's fantastic life begets life anyway every week we give people an opportunity to give their life to jesus christ and today if you want to start that journey of faith you just said this prayer with me lord jesus thank you for dying on the cross for me will you delete all my sins today come into my life by the power of your holy spirit give me the assurance that i'm forgiven and give me power to change and follow you every single day because i ask it in jesus name amen if you said that prayer get in touch with us and uh, email us if you want to do if you, if you want to plant churches with us we're a church planting movement as global get in get in touch with us let's get going we're already a day late let's go for it have a great week love you lords and we'll see you next week if that talk impacted you in any way or you like what you heard then make sure you get in touch with us if you said the prayer at the end or you wanted to again make sure you get in touch with us it's really simple all you need to do click on the link in the description below fill out your details one of our team will be in touch with you straight away we'd love to hear from you so make sure you do that straight away We've come towards the end of our broadcast, but one last thing before you go, don't forget about, about our Connect and dinner parties that are happening throughout the week in different locations. And if you wanna be a part of one of our Connect groups or dinner parties, then again, make sure you get in touch with us following the link in the description below. Have a fantastic week, whatever you're getting up to, and we will see you same time next week. Have a great week.